would you start selling real estate? <laughs> right? Would you become an artist? Would you allow yourself to fall in love again? Would you allow yourself to give forgiveness that you've been denying someone? Would you want to heal old relationships? Would you want to write a book? Would you want to travel? Would you want to learn to swim? I mean, whatever. What would you do differently if you knew you had two years? Now, I'm talking about as, as a planet. Now, individually, people face these realities every day through disease, cancer, and the such. You know? And they're the bravest people in the world because they know. They've been given a diagnosis that's terminal. Many, many don't die, but others do. But they live with that every day. And every day, they have the courage to get up and keep doing whatever it is that they want to do. What would we do differently as a society, as a global planet? This is not just an American issue. This is a planetary issue. And I have to tell you, the extraterrestrials don't see us as Russians, Chinese, Americans, Japanese. They don't see any of that. We are one race. Irregardless of our differences and our languages, we are one race to them. Only we don't believe that. We're the only ones who don't believe that. Okay? What would we do differently? What would you do with your life? How would you live it? Would you be the most benevolent person you know? Would you go the other way? You know? Would you be a gangster? You know, would you sing love ballads or would you sing rap? You know, everybody, the reason I, I, I ask this is that the future isn't set. Now there's talk, I heard something recently about uh, Star, a star going nova. That's about 3,200 light years from us. Don't worry about that. There is more than enough help here that that's not how it's going to go for us. Okay? That, that, that's not going to happen. I mean, it may go nova, but technology exists, and there are plenty of resources in our particular solar system right now to ensure that that's not how we're going to end. Okay? Because there are a lot of people very, very curious about us. Now, the reason I say that is that we are a planet that has 22 very specific genetic markers. Okay? We are a collection, a collage, a compendium of many different extraterrestrial races living together. This is not common out there. Okay? especially in third density, in a very complex ecosystem like we have. Okay? It's, it's not, there aren't that many. And they're here to watch us because we are, as a civilization, at a place where many of them have been before. And that is, is that we are spiritually evolving. At the same time, we have created technology that we barely know how to contain and use. The technology was created in a space of fear. Those using it, holding it, maintaining it, controlling it, are in a space of fear. Humanity, however, is at a space where it's beginning to step out of that reality to create something new have is you have a consciousness that sees itself becoming completely irrelevant. Which makes them unpredictable. You know, and nuclear weapons are no laughing matter. Ever. 
Okay? Now, there are extraterrestrial races, benevolent extraterrestrial races, having contact with some military sources on Earth from different countries. God, there is just so much going on. <laughs> and the wild card here really is us. We're the kingpin. We need to continue on this movement of not only sticking together, but focusing on what it is that we really want. What kind of world do we really want? We can't be, we really can't be serious about wanting to create a global government that controls every aspect of our lives. Look at what they've done with the world already. Why would we trust them with anything else? We can't. We simply can't. Because they're not us. They see us as a natural resource. Therefore, we need to turn our focus completely away from them and create what we do want so that their paradigm completely collapses on itself. And it needs to. Because it isn't real. It's not us. It's all about them. Okay? So, what is it that we would want? The protocols for contact. This is very difficult. And what makes it difficult isn't the actual, okay, here we are, you know, now you see us, here's our ships, now you know we're real, okay? The difficult part is, how do we set up the protocols? How do we approach them as an equal without worshipping them, because that will make them leave in a heartbeat, the benevolence anyway, they're not into that, okay? The regressives, they'd be more than happy to allow you to worship them, because we've got a history of that already. It's in the Bible, Old Testament, Egyptian books, Sumerian texts. Got plenty of history of that. Okay? That's never served us either. Begin within yourselves to begin visualizing what the protocols would look like. Now, in the last conversation that I had, I asked who would be the most likely people at the moment, the way things are now, that they would contact to begin a dialogue regarding mentorship. And the answer would probably surprise you. It definitely isn't the United States. Okay? Even though we have probably the most advanced technology the world's known since Atlantis. It's the Japanese. It would be the Japanese government at this moment. Because of their prudence, because of their integrity, and because of their dedication to their own people. Now, that's something to think about. Okay? This is the country that took two, three nuclear weapons. <laughs> okay? And look at how far they've come. So, when will this happen? I'm not exactly sure. I do know that between now and the fall of this year, huge events are going to occur. Um, some absolutely wonderful and some not. I also want you to know that the Andromedans are very concerned about the Earth moving through this gravitational plasmic field, which we call the galactic plane. It is their concern that the planet itself, when it hits it, because of its vibration, its frequency, it's going to bounce off of it at first, creating a huge global quake. There have been discussions as to whether to intervene, to, in other words, align something in front of the Earth to open the pathway through it, or to allow this to occur naturally. 
Now, the natural part is this. When the Earth moves through the galactic plane, the Schumann residence of the planet is going to change. It is going to become much, much higher than what it is right now. All, indi all indigenous life on, that, on the planet will then have to change its harmonic frequency to match that of Earth. Many species will not be able to. A lot of human beings will not be able to. But those that do, it will be a, na it'll be a natural transition into what we know as fourth density. And in some respects, fifth density. Those kids that are coming in with three strands of DNA, they will be able to go between three, four, uh, four and five. They will be telling us, coming back, and teaching us what's ahead of us. They will become the educators. Okay? Half of them are ETs anyway, who have volunteered to come into this place simply because none of our forefathers have ever experienced this before. So, I don't know if there'll be intervention on that or not. There will be earth changes, though. Okay? And I don't know at the moment, if that happens, where the safest place to be is. I don't know at this point. If I find out, I'll definitely let you know. Okay? Um, but intuitively, you will get it. I'm sure you will get it, that you will be exactly where it is you're supposed to be. And you will know exactly what it is you're supposed to do. Okay? You have to know that, because that's what this is about. When we pass through this plane, we will become an agrarian society once again, which I thought was fascinating because Mr. Mellon Thomas talked about that yesterday as well, last night. Based on his death experiences, that's what he was shown as well, that we become an agrarian society again. It's not to say manufacturing will go away, it won't, but we will not solely be on it. We will, we will, we will, be, we will become indigenous people once again with the planet. I'm also told that many people, once we have passed through this transition, this change in frequency and harmonics, that many people will opt to go to different star systems and represent Earth, represent our civilization. Because there is a huge um, perk to being the only planetary society to actually go through such a shift as this. And the fact that we represent 22 different extraterrestrial races here genetically and are considered genetic royalty, that we will be invited to participate on levels absolutely unimagined to us at this point. Okay, we will become ambassadors. We will be teaching other societies basically what not to do. <laughs> okay, because we're the professors. <laughs> we have become the professors. A gentleman, and I'm not sure if he's here, his name was uh, Gilbert. He's, I spoke with him yesterday. He asked me to give him, in one sentence, the bottom line to all this. And I've been searching for that one sentence, that bottom line, all my life. Um, but I heard someone else say it yesterday. And, and it is simply, love your life. You, just, you can't say it any better than that. Um, 